When you get to Algebra 2, which, again, not all of you will take. It's not how it works. Like, not everyone. You have to take Algebra. You have to take Geometry to graduate from any school in District 2. But Algebra 2 becomes, like, almost like an elective math where you only take it if you really are up to the challenge and want to take it for various reasons. But if you do take Algebra 2, we'll do systems, but we do systems in Algebra 2 with three variables. So... When we do them in Algebra 2, we're graphing in X, Y, Z. Like, you know how you play Minecraft, right? How when you look at your coordinates, how you have an X and a Y, but you also have a Z. So that third axis creates the third dimension. So what we always work with in Algebra 1 is two-dimensional. Like, that's called a plane. It's a flat surface. So when we graph a line on a piece of paper, we're graphing in, in a two-dimensional surface, right? We have a length and we have a width but we never come out towards or away from ourselves for that three-dimensional aspect. Anyways, you'll see this again in a couple of years in Algebra 2, only we'll do it in three dimensions. And the things that we call lines in Algebra 2 will be planes. So when you graph an X, Y, Z equation, it's no longer a line. <clears throat> it's a flat surface. If you can picture that. So um, anyways... That's neither here nor there, I suppose. I don't even know why I'm telling you that. But when we solve systems like we're going to do now here for a few weeks, we solve systems based on two variables. And as you guys know from having done this a lot, when we graph things with two variables, uh, the way we've been doing it, they're called lines, right? And so lines are graphed on a flat surface. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to study lines and how they interact with each other. So what you've worked with in the past with me is graphing lines. So one thing that can happen when you graph a pair of lines, and this will be new because instead of just graphing a line, what we're going to work on today is we're going to graph multiple lines, but on the same piece of paper. So if I graph a line like this, and I graph another line like this, you could say that that's a system. And what we mean by that is that there's just more than one equation working together here. So each of these red lines would be the graph of a different equation. And those two equations together are what we call the system. Now, this is one possibility. If Shyla grabs a piece of graph paper and graphs a line, and then she hands it to Cambry and Cambry graphs another line, there's a pretty high probability that their two lines are going to cross, right? And where they cross, like the angle that they cross at, that, that's not of any importance in this unit. Like we don't care about the perpendicular sort of thing. But what is important is that when the lines cross, there is a point right here. And I want you to just kind of agree with this, but only when you're ready. It's, it's obvious, I think, but got to take this in. There is a line that is on both points, or the, excuse me, there is a point that is on both lines. Like if I, if I circled like this purple point, that purple point's not interesting to me because it's on one line, but it's not on the other line. And if I circled like this green point, again, I'm not interested because yes, yay, it's on one of the lines, but it's not on the other one as well. There will only be that one point where two lines cross, and that's what we're going to spend the next few weeks tracking down. And you might think, like, this isn't worth a few weeks, right? But it is because we won't always do what we're going to do today using graphs. We do it with graphs for a couple of days. And then we move on to the other methods, which don't involve graph paper at all. You'll like, I think you'll like those better. But anyways, what we're doing today is we're solving systems by graphing. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to track down the yellow point. And this yellow point has a name. It is called the solution. And so a system will have a solution, and that solution is the point that makes both equations true at the same time. And you, you can't deny me this. You could try, but you know, I mean, you're not going to win. That yellow point, you have to agree, is on both lines, right? 
So that's what we seek here is the place where two lines cross and it's called a solution. It's the solution to the system. Now, it's not gonna happen in today's assignment, but it will starting next week. There are other things that can happen. If Ryan and Gunner each graphed a line on a piece of graph paper, do they have to cross? They don't, do they? And it's sort of, it's not that obscure, but I mean, it's it's sort of odd to think this, like Ryan could very meticulously put down a ruler and graph a line uh, with a slope of, I don't know, like four thirds or five halves or something. That's not important. But then if Gunner wanted to be crafty and Ryan hands his graph paper to Gunner and says, hey, I want you to graph another line, right? Right, they're gonna cross. Let's find where they cross. Gunner could very strategically put his ruler down and make a line like this. And we would say, what about those lines? They're parallel. Are they ever going to cross? They're not. So there will be systems, which again, you won't see today, just FYI, but there will be systems of equations where they actually don't cross. And so what would you, what would you think we'd say about the solution of that system? There is no solution. Very good. And that you have to accept that that's a possibility, right? I mean, there's there's no law that says that two lines graphed at the same on the same paper have to cross. I mean, honestly, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time they're going to cross eventually, right? But there is a possibility that lines could be parallel, and there is a third possibility as obscure. This one is obscure, and it's some people click it right away, and some people would never think of this. What else could happen if two people each graphed lines? Like one graphed a line and then handed the paper and another one graphed a line. What's the only other thing that could happen? Yes. Good job grasping that right away. There is a very distinct possibility that Alana takes a piece of graph paper and graphs this line. And then hands it over to Morgan and says, graph me another line. And, and Morgan just, you know, feeling feisty goes like this and says, there, I just graphed another line. And that can happen. And again, it's not, you're not going to see these are these last two right here <clears throat> are called special cases. And you will not see any special cases today, but it is a possibility that they happen. <clears throat> what would you think we'd say about the point where the this the last set of lines, these ones over here, what would you think we'd say about the solution to that system? It's, it's hard to answer because it's almost like so weird, but how, where do the lines touch each other or cross? Everywhere. So how many solutions does that system have? Correct. So this one has infinite solutions. And so these are literally the only three things that can happen if you graph two lines in the same plane. They will either cross and how they cross is irrelevant, like perpendicular, whatever. They're going to they're gonna cross, or they're going to be parallel, like train tracks, and they're never going to cross, or they're going to sit right on top of each other, and they're going to continuously be forcing solutions, right? So I just wanted to get that out there, that those are the three possible systems we're going to see over the coming couple, three weeks. But the one we're going to focus on today, and probably the next time we revisit this next week, is going to be this one. So what we're going to do today is we're going to master the art of graphing two lines and just observing the point where they cross and then naming the point. So when we think about like, well, what's the answer to the problem? The answer to the problem is the name of the point where the two lines cross. Got it? Okay. Now this entire unit, this first part is predicated on the assumption that you know how to graph a line, that you know how to do y equals mx plus p, that you know how to get y by itself and graph a line. So let's take a look over at what your assignment's going to look like. As I sometimes do, I'm going to use Delta Math sort of as my assistant here. So when I go into Delta, um, I will see that there are going to be two. You won't see this behind the scenes, but there are two types of problems mixed into today's assignment. The first one is solving graphically, and it is... Um, level one, these are the easier ones here. And so right away, when someone says the word, okay, graph these lines, what's something right away that you're attracted, what attracts you to these two equations? There's something about them. 
Ah, oh, what a great answer, Braxton. What a great way to start the day. They're in slope intercept form, like for real. That's a great answer. And I love that about this. I love that I don't have to do any math. I don't have to do any algebra. I don't have to move anything, add anything, change any signs. Like these are both y equals mx plus b. So I can't zoom too much further and keep the equations and the graph on the board. So you'll have to kind of use your best eyeballs here. Let's focus on the first one up here. Uh, how would I graph that line? Where would I start him? Down. At down four. So I'm going to go down and click a dot. And you've seen this before. We did this months ago when we first started graphing lines. Like right now, Delta is waiting. Like, how do you want me to tilt this line, right? So we need another point. And where is our... Go ahead. Perfectly spoken. Up three. So I'm going to go up three, right two. And all you have to do is click that one other point and press it. If you try to do any more points, Delta is going to say, you know, you, you don't, you can't click any more on the same line. So one down, one to go. Now, what are the what is the starting point of the second line? Okay. Up seven, right? Remember, up and down are the starting words. And so we're going to go up seven and put our first dot. Bless you. And what's, bless you again. What's his slope? Down one, right three. Again, perfectly spoken. No overs and nonsense like that. Down one, specifically right three. So one, two, three. And then you click another dot. And now your job, this is pretty light work here. When we're doing it on paper, like when we do the, the paperwork and quiz stuff on this, it'll be a little harder because you have to use a ruler. But Delta does all the heavy lifting. You just have to know how to do a little math. Um, can you observe for me what is the name of the point where the lines cross? I'm seeing six five, and it's right here where I'm kind of where you see where I've got my mouse hovered. It's pretty obvious that is the point where the lines cross. And so all I'm simply going to do is name it six. Five, right? Six up five is the name of the point. And I'm going to go down and just type that in. And of course, since it's a point, I need to name it with parentheses and then six, comma, five, close parentheses, and then you send it. So they're easy, right? So that's going to be one flavor of problem that you see. And as you might expect, there, there's some that are just a tiny bit harder. What I found with this particular section of Delta is that it'll give you one, hope I'm not lying to you, it'll give you one equation that's in y equals mx plus b, that's like our freebie, and then it'll generally give you one that's not. So let's uh, do a little bit of work on this one. It's obviously the second equation that we need to manipulate. How would we get y by itself in that second equation? Yeah, you don't want to move anybody but the 2x. And the reason I like the y, there will be some where we have to move the y or should move the y, but I like the y there because he's a positive. So what I'm going to do is take the 2x and remember, we're going to move him over and put him right there, except we got to remember to make him negative. So what would this second equation be in y equals mx plus b? Perfect, Brenda. y equals negative 2x and then the minus 1 stays as a minus 1. And now we're ready for some graphage. So I'm going to leave that right there on the screen. Let's go to the top equation first. What's his starter? Up eight. Good job. And what's his slope? Perfect. Up one, right one. And there's your line. Okay, what's the starter now for the second line? Down one. And what's his slope? Yeah, see, isn't it? It's good to be good at graphing lines. This would be a really frustrating unit if you still don't know how to graph a line, right? But assuming that's like old hat for you guys, then you just graph the lines. And again, we just observe. By the way, if you ever see a point during this assignment that is not a lattice point, you've done something wrong. Delta is not going to ask you to estimate or like try to observe a tweener point. So if I got a point where the lines cross and I'm like, it looks like like negative three and one fourth and nah, something went haywire there. So you'll know, right, if it goes poorly. And then what's the name of the point where they cross? So I just go down and I just literally type in negative three, comma five, close the parentheses, and that's all I've got to do. So I'm going to click through and try to find one that's just a slight bit tougher, and then we'll get this done as quick as we can. We're almost there. So um, here's a good example. I wanted to get to one of these because I do think there's a lot of these on here. So the first equation you would agree is ready to rock and roll, right? You with me, Hagen? You staying with me? Okay, good. I don't need to mess with the first one. But the second one, let's think smart here and let's not move the X. How do we get that second one ready for graphology? Yeah, I would take this Y and actually move it. What benefit does that give us? 
it becomes positive. And we like that. I don't like dividing by negatives. I'd rather not have to. So I'm going to move the Y to the right side like this. But then in exchange for that, who else has to move? The eight is like, oh, well, now I'm on the wrong side. Thanks a lot, Mr. Y. So then the eight says, well, I'll double back and head to the other side. The X does not move, but it's going to be positive X. And then what? Minus eight. Minus eight. And then again, you just graph the two lines and observe where they go. Pretty light work, right? Do you guys have any questions about that? No. Nice short lecture. So your assignment is on the Delta. It should have assigned itself already. That's what I'd like you to do today. You'll probably get it done without any issues. You might need a little paper for the getting Y by itself part, but eh, probably not. I right, will see. See how you do. This one. So it's, I say it's never going to be the first one, right? It's that second one. Could you read it to me, Evans? Yeah, I'm glad you got this one. And you guys will see this as well. So I think this deserves paper. I Doing this in my head is really hard for me. So the first thing I'm going to do, I don't know if, if, it's your call. I, and that last problem, when we moved the Y to the other side to make it positive, I felt like that was a really good move because it really finished the job for us. The trouble with this one is if we take the 3Y and move it over, we still eventually have to divide. So I'm going to leave it up to you. So I, what would you do since it's your problem? Would you move the 3Y and the 3 or would you leave it? That's up to you. You like it positive better? Yeah. Let's do it then. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the minus 3y and we're going to move it as per that red arrow. But then the trade-off is we then have to turn around and take this 3 and move it as per the green arrow, right? So that's going to leave us with 3y. And then the x is going to stay the same and the 3 is going to become a minus. You cool with that? Okay. Now... On yours, and I hope you guys are paying attention because you will all almost inevitably encounter problems like this. You've seen this before, but it's a good review for us. We have to divide by three. So when I divide right here by three and divide here by three and here, remember how we divide like everybody on their own? Then we're going to get our y equals. And what is, I'm going to point to it with a purple arrow. Right here, what is the slope going to be? Good job. One third. So remember, there's you've seen this, that there's an invisible one in front of that X. And it helps to see it in this case, because then when you pry that slope off of there, that invisible one works as a team with the three we just divided by to make that slope of one third. And so we're going to get one third of X minus three divided by three, which is one. Does that get you squared away? No, you. that's a great question, because that's going to happen to you. Yeah, you can move the 3y or don't, but eventually you either have to divide by the 3 or the negative 3, depending on whether or not you move. Yeah. Sorry. If your point's off the graph, then you did something wrong. So. Okay, so let's let's review something here. So... Um, if I get an equation like this, and again, it's nice when we work as a team and kind of help each other out with the things that we've kind of maybe forgotten. I'm, I'm with, uh, I'm with Jackson on this one. Like I'm going to straight run out of room, huh? So when I go to graph this, yes, you go backwards. So remember, you're totally right. If you go up eight, you go way up here on the graph and you're like, what gives? I'm out of real estate. Like, how do you expect me to go up four and write five when the graphs, the point's going to be way out here? So you got to picture the slope and backtrack. So instead of going up four and write five, Ballard, what are we going to do? Yeah, so we're essentially just going to retrace our steps the other way. So down four and back to the right five, and then you can graph in the in field. You're welcome. Excellent question so far. Anyone else have anything? Uh-huh. What you got? 
one. Okay. So I don't see any benefit in this case. I hope you agree in moving this because like the benefit that Brendel got on his was he, he moved his Y because he was able to turn it to a positive. Yours is already positive. So if you move it, you're actually making your life harder. So why don't we instead take this X and vote him off the island, right? So what is our next line going to say? Remember when you move, but, but thank you for putting the X first, but when you move him across the equal sign, what do you have to do? Yeah, he becomes a negative X and then the 12 stays as a positive. So we just put plus 12. Is that okay? Now, what do we do? Divide the two and we divide it, remember, everywhere. Division is like a, it's like distribution. It's like multiplication. Everyone gets it. So when we cancel these twos, we're done. We just got to get this right here. So like we talked about on Brendel's, the slope is going to emerge from this yellow box. And what is the slope going to be? Uh -uh. It's definitely negative, bro. I'll put that for you. But we'll, there's a number right here. Remember? Oh. Thank you for the whisper of that. That was very good. Oh, yes, negative one half. Does, do you remember that? You can't divide one by two and say two. It's a fraction. When the top is smaller than the bottom, you'll never, ever get a hold. So uh, negative one half is the slope. And then what's 12 divided by two? And there's your, there's your equation. You're good with the graphing part of it? Yeah, anyone else having any questions? I just have a quick question. What is your equation? Oops. I would. Because you seem to like your Y to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you're going to get the 2Y is going to come over here. Yeah. The X is just going to stay put, and then the 8 is going to become positive, yeah. and then divide by 2. Yeah. You good? I'm making sure that was yeah. I, if I were doing it by myself, I probably would just leave the negative 2Y, because I don't really care about negatives. I know they bother you guys, so it's up to you. But like you and I are both, like I'm going to divide by negative 2. But so who cares though, right? Like I'm still going to get y equals positive one half of x and positive four, and so are you. So uh, whatever. Yeah. Any any over here? We guys, we good? Okay. So you said x minus y equals negative four. Okay. And I liked what you said, how you would move the Y and the four, effectively just changing their places, right? So the X stays, the four changes over and becomes positive, and then the Y changes over. Is that what you did? Perfect. So where are you going to start your graph? Up four, you mean to say, right? And then what's the slope going to be? What's your slope going to be? Nope. Remember, please, that the slope is always right there. And when you can't see it, it's one. So you interpret that as up one right one. Yeah. You want to read your equation to me? I assume it's the one where you have to get y by itself, right? It's y Negative 3x minus 6. Oops, my bad. Negative 3 halves of x. So I'm just going to sketch this because I don't have, I don't want to put my graph paper up here, but uh, if I were going to sketch this, let's talk about this. I'll, circle, I'll, color, I'll color code them for you. Let's do the red one first. So where would you start that graph? So like over here? Oh, so you meant to say up four? Okay, so let's go up four. And what is the slope of that line? It's right there. 
No, nope. this seems to be a pretty common theme. So you guys all, you remember when you can't see the slope, if all you see is X, remember that there's an invisible one attached to X and we need to interpret that in our brains as one over one. So that means the slope, you can't see it, but it's there and it's up one, right one. So you're going to go up one, right one and put a dot. And then you're going to graph a line that goes through those two points. Good so far? Okay, how about the second line? Let's do, I'll call him the green one. How do we graph that one? Where do we start? No, I need a starting point first. Remember this. So over here, is that okay? This Is this okay? I'm really trying to drive the point home that when we talk about where does a graph start, I need you to use the words up and down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we start a graph at negative six, that's not going to work for me because that's there's a word in English. It's called ambiguous. It means like it can mean multiple things, right? It can be interpreted multiple ways. So when we say, where do we start the graph? I need you to be real tight on your word selection and say, oh, I want you to go down six. So there's where I start my graph. Now, what do you interpret the slope ends? Down three over two like that. I'm sorry that I'm being so difficult, but I really need you never using the word over. I need you to use four words for me. Only these four. You know what they are? Up, down, right, and left. Got it? So I think when you said to go down three over two, what you meant to say was down three, right two. Now, do you have enough room to go down three and right two? Is there enough room on your graph? Okay. Hey, uh, Addy, if you hadn't had enough room, and this goes back to Jackson's question, like let's say you ran out of space down there, you could have also backtracked and gone up three and then back to the left two like that. And do you see where the lines cross? Again, I'm not really using graph paper here, so I'm just estimating, but I, I'm sure I missed it. I'm, I'm close though. Where do your lines cross? I'm going to come look at your screen. I'm going to pause this. <laughs> 